Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome all of you folks back to another episode of the Fort Worth Community Arts Center's Boxed Lunch Program. So a new month is upon us. Here comes August. God only knows what we have to look forward to. And the main thing that we are excited about today is our fabulous guest from the Bruce Wood Dance Studio, the one and only Joy Bollinger. Did I say that right, Joy? You did. Hello. How are awesome. you? Awesome. I am doing very well, and we are so appreciative of you joining us today. And uh, before we get started, would you mind just taking a moment and introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about who you are and what it is you do? Yes. Hi, I'm Joy Bollinger. I'm artistic director of Bruce Wood Dance here in Dallas. I um, began dancing for Bruce back in the Fort Worth days of the company, and I spent most of my career with him, and uh, have really spent kind of most of my life in dance, and, uh, and now I'm artistic director. I spend my days here in this studio you see behind me, um, working with our dancers, uh, creating new works, bringing in guest choreographers, and just keeping dance alive in our community. Well, we are very, very grateful. Now, in some of my notes, and uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is Bruce's second incarnation. Is that correct? Yeah. The first company that Bruce started was called Bruce Dance Company, and it was originally in Fort Worth, Texas, and that's the company I joined in 2002 out of college, and uh, spent the majority of my career chasing him. That company ended in 2007, and uh, it began back up as Bruce Wood Dance Project in 2010 here in Dallas, and uh, executive director Gail Halperin kind of uh, pushed that project forward. Um, now, instead of it being a pickup group that performs once a year, it is a 40-week-a-year company that is uh, having main stage performances here, coming back to Fort Worth when we can, yes. and, uh, and then traveling and touring some. Nice, very exciting, very exciting. So we're very, very lucky to have such a, a, a wonderful group of uh, dancers in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I know that uh, Bruce has a long history and um, uh, certainly a uh, very valued asset to the arts community here in DFW. Yeah, you guys came back to uh, us at the Arts Center in uh, 2019, and I know that that was one of the uh, uh, first times that you'd been back over in the Fort Worth area. So we were very, very uh, grateful to have you guys and just uh, very excited for you taking the time today, Joy, to uh, have lunch with me and uh, tell us what's going on over there in the dance world. So <laughs> on that note, what is on your lunch menu today? Well, get excited because this is a, a chef's, uh, you know, real surprise. We're going to have um, a sandwich <laughs> with some wheat bread, some lovely organic raw unfiltered honey, peanut butter, and banana slices. So it's a treat we like around my household and uh, gives you a little protein and energy for the day and a little sweetness as well. It, it sounds like Elvis Presley's legacy is alive and well at uh, the Bruce Wood Dance Studio. So uh, I'm uh, very excited to see that. And uh, it sounds like a wonderful, fabulous, healthy lunch. Now, um, is that par for the course for lunches for dancers? Um, I think maybe just this part of it would be par for the course for lunch for dancers. Lunches are quick. Uh, here it's usually a 15 minute break and it's just scarf something down, get a little bit of refuel. A lot of our dancers, they don't like to eat too much before they're going to dance again. So uh, it's just a little burst of energy. Yep. Very nice. Well, my lunch menu is uh, uh, pretty simple as well today too. I am uh, doing vegetable beef soup today and mm -hmm. some Ritz crackers. So uh, yeah, lean and mean and uh, stepping into August with a little bit more healthy stuff than I normally eat. I want to give a, uh, a little shout out today to uh, the Potbelly Sandwich Shop, one of my uh, favorite go-tos. 
And I have some uh, vegetable soup that uh, I picked up there curbside. And then I'm going to turn it into vegetable beef soup because I had some um, steak bites uh, last night. And so I took some of those uh, leftovers, cut them up, and then I'm just gonna put that into the soup and then yeah. reheat that just to get a little bit of uh, protein on my end as well. All right, Joy, well, we're very, very glad to have you. And while we get started on our fabulous lunch items today, I was curious if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about how has uh, Bruce Wood and the dance community in general in DFW been reacting and uh, been affected by the uh, COVID-19 situation? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been a huge shift in gears. Uh, in March, we were pushed to suspend our in-studio rehearsals, obviously, with kind of the onset of the pandemic locally. And uh, we pretty quickly moved our classes, our daily class, to Zoom to keep the dancers moving. And then uh, we began creating online content. And that was anything from our dancers uh, being extremely creative with our social media offerings, uh, workout ideas, food ideas, um, any sort of connection and engagement with our audience, but also creating uh, new dance works on our virtual platform and streaming uh, pieces that we've done in the past uh, performances and things we hadn't shared with a larger audience like that. So uh, it was a challenge and a quick turnaround, but we were able to have a nice offering at the end of our season in June and have kind of 10 days of a 10 year uh, commemoration of our company virtually and uh, keep rolling out projects that we'd worked on during our time out of the studio. Wow. Now, I don't think people really understand. Can you give me a general idea? How many live uh, recitals, performances have uh, uh, actually been affected in what, six months now, I guess it's been since the shutdown. Can you give us just kind of an idea as to uh, uh, how many performances and uh, uh, in-house classes have been affected by this? Yeah, the, the actual week that we were closing down, we had a uh, guest in town uh, flown in. Kate Skarpatowska was here to restage a Lar Lubavitch piece, and she had a three-week residency with us that had to shut down immediately. And, um, and then uh, we had a Fort Worth homecoming show planned at the Scott Theater in April that had to be postponed. And then we had some smaller local events in May but our major June performance, our season finale and uh, closer, all that had to be uh, postponed and all that operations suspended that were in theater. So it was wow. a lot. It was a lot yeah. of planning and work that had to just be wiped. And how many dancers did that affect? 12 dancers. And uh, one great thing is that since we did pivot quickly to online content and offerings, we were able to continue to pay the wages of our dancers through the end of their contract uh, with keeping their activity level high and our audience engagement high through the, through the virtual scene. Well, there's a, there's a little silver lining there as well, so I'm glad to hear that. And uh, yeah, I, you know, people have an assumption that a show or a, a, a theater is uh, uh, just um, a performance, but I don't think that people really uh, realize some of the uh, broader effects. And, uh, you know, it's not only the dancers, but also the technicians and the directors and the choreographers and all the things that uh, uh, go into that. And um, uh, I think people are starting to see that there's a little bit of a, a broader effect by that, but it's just interesting to hear some of the actual counts. Now, um, have you moved forward in terms of uh, uh, collecting your company for the, I say, upcoming season? Have you been able to uh, uh, continue to move forward, in, at least in terms of uh, uh, getting the dancers and, uh, and working on uh, pieces and things uh, virtually or uh, uh, even yourself? 
Yeah, our our fall season is going to really be a combination of uh, uh, a couple outdoor events nice. and uh, virtual programming. And this time we will have the benefit of uh, foresight to our virtual programming and we will have new works that are created specifically for screen dance for uh, it'll be videography and uh, created with filming in mind. So instead of taking something that was just put on stage and playing it or, uh, you know, catching a few things danced outdoors spontaneously, we're going to really be able to plan. And it's, uh, it's, it's different, but it's creating a little bit of an opportunity for growth in that area because that's not something we've necessarily focused on before. Sure. Very exciting. I know, uh, uh, the artistic community is getting uh, quite creative. Um, we just visited with the um, um, Film Commission uh, here in Texas on, uh, I believe it was Friday. And so one of the things that we were talking about was being able to um, uh, pull some of the mediums together and, uh, and see if people aren't able to uh, take advantage of some of the insight of the uh, knowledge of the camera's eye from the film industry and uh, uh, leaning on that in terms of live performance and seeing if there couldn't be some support there as well. And I know that I've seen some of the virtual play performances are, uh, are really starting to get uh, quite creative. And um, this weekend on YouTube, there was uh, Lollapalooza uh, 2020 is uh, playing on uh, YouTube. And they had um, funding for, I believe it was Arts for uh, Illinois. But one of the things that really struck me is early on in the uh, uh, sheltering at home, there were a lot of on live music performances, but it was very simplistic in terms of uh, living rooms and uh, uh, singular instruments. And I was really, really taken aback at how the artists are really starting to engage with the virtual platforms and the creativity and the artistic expression that you're really starting to see in some of these virtual settings. And uh, it was, it, there were some really inventive things out there. And so I'm excited to see how that continues to play out, especially in the dance world, where it is so much focused on uh, movement, and physicality within a, uh, uh, a framing of a, a computer screen. So uh, it, it sounds great. Now, now, do you have a different choreographer for the staging of the viewing point from the staging of the actual dance? Have you found that, uh, that choreography has changed in having to keep the camera in mind? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have a, a guest choreographer coming in who is planning a uh, film for dance at some specific locations in Dallas, and then I'll be creating a new work. And uh, I am shaping the movement around what the view from the audience will be and how the camera will move with the movement. So it's, it's like there's one more dancer, and that's the camera <laughs> that yep. I need to really be thinking about the entire time. Wow, it's so exciting, and uh, I, I certainly can't wait to see uh, what you're able to do with that medium, and um, uh, certainly looking forward to that. All right, so I've already talked too much, and uh, we haven't even gotten into our lunches yet. Do you mind just telling me a little bit while I turn on the uh, stove and put some soup in a soup pan? <laughs> yeah. um, tell me a little bit about what goes into your lunch preparation and uh, how you go about making this uh, fabulous uh, uh, peanut butter and banana sandwich. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of, I think, a, a throwback to a childhood treat. And um, basically, I'm gonna put the peanut butter on the bread, just like you would any other sandwich spread and uh, get it going that way. All right, while you're doing that, I'm just going to pull my uh, vegetable soup here from the pan. And then, like I said, I'll be throwing in some of those steak bites as well. The real question here is if I want to make it a closed sandwich or kind of a bruschetta style um, open face 
peanut butter, banana, honey sandwich, uh, messy but pretty? That'll be the question. But yeah, peanut butter on bread, slice a banana, and, and, and get it going a little bit here. Yep, I've got mine all mixed up and starting to heat that up as well. Um, while you're uh, uh, cutting up your nanner there, <laughs> why don't you talk to me a little bit about what you have learned about yourself and or the uh, uh, Bruce Wood organization during this trying time? Yeah, man, I have been so impressed by not not only the administrative staff and the board, but the dancers in this company, because, um, you know, dancers crave movement, they crave contact, they crave an audience. Um, you know, administrative staff and board, we crave structure and planning. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, we spend a lot of time on that. But it's the resilience, uh, the resilience and the push forward even even knowing that uh, we might be moving forward with information that could change, or we might be moving forward with the plan that we'll have to pivot 15 more times, but it's just that you keep pushing forward. And the creativity, the dancers uh, were outstanding, just outstanding in their, in their creative ideas for what we could do online. And, um, uh, they created a 30-minute uh, video work just for our 10-year commemoration. And it was kind of the brainchild of one of our dancers, Cole, who did the videography. And then different, uh, different dancers choreographed sections, created, uh, worked on big picture stuff. And uh, this was all while shelter, you know, staying at home. So wow. it was very, it was difficult for them. And then when they were to plan from home, and then when they were able to go out, it was, you know, I'll meet you in a field and we'll be far away from each other, but we'll, we'll you know, we're going to create something and it's Texas and it's summer. And I'm pretty sure there's bugs in this grass, but we're going to create art, you know, and we're going to share something and hopefully it'll enrich and heal and inspire and, uh, you know, keep our community alive and connected. Yeah, so, absolutely. I was impressed. I was really impressed. Yeah, uh, artists are a uh, resilient group to say the least. And, um, you know, there's challenges uh, in the arts uh, uh, way before uh, this situation came upon us. And um, I think uh, artists may have had a small leg up in uh, dealing with challenges because uh, it seems to be something that um, has been present in the uh, arts community uh, from the beginning. And so uh, it's nice to know that uh, uh, people are, again, being inventive. And, and I know yeah. that you've already talked about some of this stuff. What have you seen uh, uh, being one of the biggest adjustments uh, to the challenges of teaching and training in a, a, a dance company setting? Dance is so physical. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of limitations with uh, what's been accessible to, uh, to people in terms of gyms and uh, uh, large gatherings. How have you guys stayed in shape and, uh, and, and stayed on point to yeah. uh, uh, use that pun? Yeah, Poorly, it's probably. a challenge. I know that um, when the dancers were taking class via Zoom at home, uh, you know, you're constricted by what flooring you have in your house and how far uh, your bar top that you hold onto is away from your table when you need to be doing larger exercises and how much you can move. And that was really challenging is everybody finding a space um, that they could take class in that worked for them. And then uh, we don't realize how much energy we gather from our environment and other bodies across the room and a person right in front of you watching you move and coaching you you know and I mean it was a challenge for them to dig deep day after day and you know look at a computer screen and go, you know it, it, that disconnect um, sure. was challenging for a while they had to push through that and then uh, our next challenge is going to be with our repertoire and Bruce's work has lots of contact and touch yeah. and connection 
And so as we look at what we can feature this fall, if we do have outdoor performances, when we can have contact between the dancers, how we do it, what we reshape appropriately, um, what we just don't do, you know, because it's not safe or we have to wait for the go ahead. Um, so that's been our, that's really our upcoming challenge is uh, cre the, creating the new works is a little bit easier because you kind of know what you're dealing with, but it's, it's the rep that already exists. How do we, how do we present that in a safe and effective manner? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just kind of a, a, a piggybacking on that, um, with all the challenges uh, uh, to physically be able to create art, um, do you mind uh, telling me a little bit about uh, your thoughts on uh, the importance of art during crisis? Why is it important for us to continue to do these and not just hole up and wait until things are clear and we can get back out? Yeah, I think art is one of, all forms of art are one of the truest expressions of self and of feelings and of environment and community. And uh, when you are forced to shut that down, especially by an outside force, it almost feels like you've been silenced and it feels like you've lost your ability to communicate and relate to one another. And I think when we're in such a vulnerable place as a, as a community and um, even bigger than that, you know, a nation. Um, we, we need to have different outlets to hear each other and especially outlets that provide hope and healing and enrichment and that bring people together. And I feel like art specifically has a very significant way of doing that. And, um, I know for me personally, it's, it's both an emotional release and also an emotional gathering of, uh, a release for me and a gathering of the thoughts that other people have around me. And so it keeps a dialogue and a transparency in how we're doing um, alive. I think that's just vital uh, right now for just mental health, physical health, emotional health and um connection wow it, it's some uh, uh great points there and uh, uh very very valid uh art is essential and it is uh what keeps us uh moving forward so have you um have you found yourself leaning towards a a, a different discipline in terms of your enjoyment of art through the uh pandemic or is it uh all dance all the time for you that's that's good. It is hard to dance at home. It made me kind of reevaluate like, oh, uh, can we is it can we create a space that is designated for this? You know, normally I'm here all day, so I don't have to think of that. Um, music has always been a big outlet for me and enjoyment. And so when I was just confined at home with my children, just playing, playing music, uh, we uh, we, you know, painted some rocks, <laughs> but uh, didn't express too much in other ways. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, it, the freedom of dance is really uh, my favorite. Nice, very nice. So um, in that uh, uh, same regard, what, um, what item or food venue or uh, pastime venue are you most looking forward to uh, indulging in once all of this is uh, uh, behind us and uh, safe for us to uh, get out and socialize again. What are you most looking forward to doing? Ah, uh, I'm daydreaming about all of them. I think, <laughs> I think the second I see a live performance, tears will probably just pour down my face of any kind. Um, and uh, Movies are, are fun. I, I, I like just sitting and eating in a company. I love people watching. I love, uh, you know, there's something about even the energy that you get when you're, it could just be a restaurant, yeah, talking, visiting, connecting. Man, I miss, I, yeah, I miss it all. And, uh, but I think live performance, it will feel 
I think will be reminded of how special and effective that is. Oh, um, absolutely, indeed. So in terms of socializing, do you have a uh, favorite pub or restaurant or coffee shop that you like to go to? And uh, what's, uh, what's your favorite menu item there? Okay, uh, if we're gonna go somewhere, we love a Saturday brunch with our kids and I'm gonna usually go for a good eggs Benedict. Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great choice, great choice. All right, so um, how's your lunch coming now? Are you, are you already all done or? Almost. I need to drizzle some honey. There um, you go. This final, this final stage. All right, well, while you're doing that, I'm just gonna give mine a stir. I've got a little bit of uh, heat coming on there and I think, uh, I think I'm in pretty good shape here. So um, we will just uh, keep moving on. Now you've got that just a tad bit out of frame and I can't wait to see the presentation, but don't pull it up yet till we get to the big reveal. And then we will, we will wow these audience members yeah. with, our, uh, with our creative. Uh, <laughs> Spectacular. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so I'm curious, what is your favorite, dancing or choreographing? Ooh, man, I, I do, I miss dancing. Um, uh, but when I'm choreographing, I, I get to sneak a little bit of that in. And um, dancing also uh, hurts quite a bit. So choreographing, uh, it's, uh, it's special. It's, I think I've always, I remember when I was little, um, making up dances with my my sister and you know okay we're gonna do this here we're gonna do this on this note and da, 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 da. so I think that may have always kind of been in there that when I would hear music the design for a dance just felt natural and like a next step uh, man that's a hard one <laughs> I do feel like when I when I'm choreographing and working with the dancers I do feel like I'm getting to dance with a much smaller specific audience. And then if I try something crazy, I can immediately stop and <laughs> regroup. But, uh, but yeah, oh gosh. Uh, I think now I just, at this point in my life, choreography is definitely the most exciting thing I can think of doing. What has been one of your uh, uh, biggest inspirations for choreography? Do you find it's uh, situational? Is it, um, uh, uh, a mood or something that strikes? What, what is it that uh, really um, uh, inspires you in terms of uh, your choreography selections? Yeah, I usually, most often, I have a moment where I'm listening to music and a mood or kind of a, like a persistent thought or prevailing image um, kind of merge and start to intertwine and I go back and listen again wait that kind of is saying this thing I want to say is lining up with the sound and I can picture uh, a movement with that and it usually the very like start is usually that place for me and a lot of times I might listen to a song and picture something and it never comes to fruition or oh that would be cool someday store it away in my brain somewhere but um that's usually the jump off point is, is when something fits maybe with uh, what we wanna talk about here and the music and everything kind of merges. That's a my... great moment, isn't it? When all of those things come together and it's just, uh, just as, clear as uh, clear as day sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm sure sometimes also it's quite cloudy and stormy trying to get all of those different elements to align. So I'm always so interested to hear about uh, creation and what inspires uh, uh, artists to, uh, to physically move forward, to finally put the paint on a canvas, start writing words, moving physically with dance, the first notes of uh, a song. And uh, it, it's just so um, interesting uh, for me personally to to hear where those those inspirational uh, uh, context comes from and what finally kicks it from your head you know to the 
uh, stage or, or to the ear. And so I'm always uh, uh, so interested to know um, uh, what inspires uh, artists to uh, pull the trigger, so to speak, and uh, move forward with that. So, um, so just out of curiosity, uh, Joy, what sort of uh, helpful community resources are you seeing or using personally? And how can your organization be assisted or provide assistance to uh, other artists and organizations? Yeah, that's great. We have felt uh, a really strong sense of community during this time. Uh, a lot of our local arts groups have done multiple, multiple roundtable talks um, on how to move forward. What can that look like? Uh, what's safe for everyone involved and also engaging in the right way. And that's been incredibly helpful to hear what other arts organizations everywhere are doing. Um, from TACA to Dance USA, they're having doctors sometimes speak to us in these webinars. And uh, it's, that's been incredibly important when you're dealing with such uh, something so fragile. We have a small company. Uh, we want to move forward. But if something went wrong here, you know, it'd be extremely challenging for us. So that's helped us put some steps in place um, so that we can move forward. And uh, I've, I've just experienced a real a reaching out from other artists that I've known over the years. And how are you guys doing? And how are y'all working on this? And uh, just a lot of discussion on uh, on what we can do and then creativity when it comes to how we're going to do it uh, we we hosted a virtual workshop this summer and um, for anybody that wanted to take class with our directors and company members learn some of our rep and, uh, and anybody who wanted to have some choreography for presentation on a reel. It's gonna be really challenging for the dance students and seniors this coming year because uh, what will they have to present, you know, if, sure. they're, if they did all their online learning. So we're gonna repeat that uh, this winter. We're gonna have another virtual workshop for our younger dancers in the community that wanna have a connection to our company, but also, have uh, some storage in their video files and things that when they are auditioning or wanting to move forward in their careers, what can they have to show if they haven't been able to perform? You know, uh, we're trying to help with that and create some content uh, there for not just ourselves, but the larger dance world. Very nice, very nice. And I guess this is really uh, uh, probably one of the most important questions that I have for you today. Where can we find out about Bruce Wood and, uh, and what it is you have going on uh, now and um, uh, hopefully be able to catch some of the uh, things that you've been able to do during all of this? How do we find you and stay in touch with Bruce Wood? Yeah, continue to go to our website at brucewooddance.org. We are hoping to have an outdoor performance in September with part of Saluna Passport to the Park and uh, our virtual programming will be released there and then follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we, love, we love connection with community and we feel inspired and excited by that. Uh, but yeah, just stay connected with us any way you can and uh, we'll let you know what we got cooking. Awesome, it sounds great. So do you have any tips for uh, staying sane mentally and or physically during all of this? Uh, I think for me, I, I had somebody tell me this. They were like, you're actually really fortunate to have young children because it's constant, it's a distraction in a good way, uh, keeps you moving. And I, I did realize that that was helpful. I think, uh, man, isolation is hard. So keep moving. Uh, Outdoors was helpful to me when I could go on a walk or a bike ride or something. And yeah, and uh, keep the faith. <laughs> keep the faith. Keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Keep All swimming. right, Joy, now don't get offended. I'm just going to turn my back here for a second and uh, I'm going to plate up here. I think that uh, I'm about ready for my presentation as well. Okay. So we will uh, 
show off these wonderful meals and then uh, get on with our lunch. I don't want that bread to get soggy on your sandwich there <laughs> from uh, me running my mouth all day. So, all right. So are you ready to show yours off? I'm ready. All right, let's see it. This is the lunch of a lifetime sliding yeah. over to the camera. Look oh, at that. it looks Beauty. absolutely Ready. delicious. And honey, that yeah. is a classic. So here we go with mine on my fine china. As always, I've got my Ritz crackers there. I'm just going to tip that up there, that beautiful vegetable beef soup. <laughs> and uh, I guess uh, with that being said, do you have any final thoughts or comments for the world out there? No, eat up, enjoy. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, Joy, this is where we take a little bite and uh, let everybody know how great everything is. So ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up another episode of Box Lunch. Joy, we're so very grateful to you for joining us. I always wait till people take a bite to say, did you have a good time? <laughs> We're so grateful to you. Ladies and gentlemen, please check out Bruce Wood. They do some fantastic stuff and uh, they have some wonderful programs out there. Make sure you follow us at the Fort Worth Community Arts Center on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. We have some fabulous YouTube content as well. So check us out. And with that being said, everybody have a safe week. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And uh, bon appetit, everybody. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.